Today let's discuss how hormones of the hypothalamus affect secretion of pituitary hormones. A portal system is a system of blood vessels that has capillary networks at both ends. The hypothalamal hypophyseal portal system refers to a network of capillaries in the hypothalamus that is connected to a capillary network of the anterior pituitary gland that allows hormones released from the hypothalamus to travel in the blood to the anterior pituitary to influence release of hormones there. Hypophalamo refers to the hypothalamus, and hypophysis refers to the pituitary gland, hence the term hypophalamohypophyseal portal system. The hypophalamohypophyseal tract refers to the axonal communication between the hypothalamus and the posterior pituitary, or neurohypophysis. The area labeled A in the image shows the cell bodies of the hypophalamohypophyseal tract. These hypophalamic neurons transport hormones down their long axons to deposit them into the blood supply shown in the inset for A. The area labeled B shows the cell bodies of the neurons that will release hormones into the hypophalamohypophyseal portal system in the inset for B. These hormones travel a short distance in the portal system made up of capillaries to the cells of the anterior pituitary. The hormones leave the portal circulation to find receptors on the various types of hormone secreting cells of the anterior pituitary that are shown in the inset for C. The anterior pituitary cells stop or start the release of hormones into the general circulation depending on what signaling hormones have arrived from the hypothalamus. Technically, the, the hormones from the hypothalamus are called neurohormones because they are released into the blood from the terminal ends of the CNS neurons. Growth hormone releasing hormone, or GHRH, and growth hormone inhibitory hormone, or GHIH, also known as somatostatin, are released from the hypothalamus and act on the anterior pituitary to influence the release of growth hormone, abbreviated GH, and also known as somatotropin. GHRH increases the release of growth hormone, and GHIH acts to decrease the release of growth hormone. When growth hormone is released into the blood, it acts upon most tissues to stimulate growth and regulate metabolism. Gonadotropin releasing hormone, or GNRH, is another hormone released from the hypothalamus that acts on the anterior pituitary to cause release of follicle stimulating hormone, or FSH, and luteinizing hormone, or LH, into the blood. FSH and LH act on the ovaries and testes to increase sex hormone production and to influence sperm production and follicle development. Thyroid releasing hormone, or TRH, stimulates the release of thyroid stimulating hormone, or TSH, also known as thyrotropin, from the anterior pituitary. TSH travels to the thyroid gland where it stimulates the release of the thyroid hormones T3 and T4 which increase metabolism and growth of most body cells. Corticotropin releasing hormone, or CRH, is also released from the hypothalamus and causes the increased release of adren adrenocorticotropic hormone, or ACTH, also known as corticotropin, from the anterior pituitary. ACTH travels through the blood to the adrenal cortex, where it stimulates the release of the glucocorticoid cortisol, Cortisol acts on most body tissues to increase protein and lipid breakdown, increase glucose production, increase blood sugar, and to act as an anti-immune and anti-inflammatory effector. Prolactin inhibitory hormone, or PIH, which is just dopamine, is released from the hypothalamus and acts on the anterior pituitary, causing it to stop release of prolactin into the blood. Prolactin causes milk production in the mammary glands and upregulates FSH and LH receptors in the uterus. Two hormones, including oxytocin and antidiuretic hormone, ADH, or also known as vasopressin, are produced in the hypothalamus and released into general circulation from axons of the posterior pituitary. Oxytocin travels to the mammary glands to stimulate release of milk and to the uterus to cause uterine contractions. ADH also enters the blood from the posterior pituitary and acts on the kidneys to retain water and on the blood vessels to cause vasoconstriction. Levels of these hormones are regulated by negative feedback loops and learning them is important 
to understand how blood levels of these hormones can change with certain pathological conditions. In summary, remember the neurohormones that are made in the hypothalamus and act on cells of the anterior pituitary. These anterior pituitary hormones then influence target tissues in the body. Oxytocin and ADH are made in cell bodies in the hypothalamus but are released from the posterior pituitary axon terminals into the blood to then travel to their target tissues. Now for a little quiz. Please match the following. Pause the video and select your answer. If you answer D, you are correct. And please match again. If you answered E, you are correct. And one more. If you answered the following, you are correct. Thanks for watching.